Welcome to my new studio here, and a very appropriate first candidate is uh, something you're going to see me smiling more about than, than I often do. Uh, this is the Dynaudio Core speaker line. Uh, the Core 59s, Core 47s, Core 7s, which I understand. Part of the reason I'm smiling so much is because of the absolute absurdity of these and choosing these the professional uh, studio monitor speakers. When we say studio monitor, we mean designed for a recording studio. That's what they're made for. But as with many things in Obsessed Garage, we're taking professional grade products, we're distilling it down to the minutia, and then figuring out if it makes sense for maybe an application as unintended. You know, these were not intended for use in a garage, but boy, they sure do work out well. The hardest choice, I think, is going to be which one you choose. Uh, and I think that comes down to simple money. You know, how much you're willing to spend. So studio monitors in a garage. Uh, notice the finish on these. The fit and finish of these is perfect. Uh, uh, it, is a, it is a textured, very stout finish. I think you'll find the durability of these 32 millimeter thick MDF cabinets is, is really great for an application in the garage. Because it's not a shiny finish, a piano type finish, um, you can wipe them. You can even dry wipe them if you needed to. Keep them, you'll, you'll find, I find in my garage, I tend, up with lots of, I tend to get lots of dust, especially if you have your speakers up on top of your cabinet array. So the, the core line, I think, is a match made in heaven for the garage because of the way that they're constructed and the way that their fit and finish is done. Uh, but I all think, still think it's a match made in heaven for the garage because of how they produce sound. These speakers are designed for you to sit at a mixing console with a pair of speakers, either in a soffit or on a stand. Generally, there's there, there's a wall there, uh, and or they're tucked into a into into like a, a void in the wall, uh, or on a bracket of some sort. These speakers are designed for you to listen to them closely, so you're sitting very close. These are called near field monitors, uh, and um, I think the 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 result of that in a garage, which is a very harsh environment, I think that uh, having one silk dome, very controlled, very specific Isotar Pro tweeter, uh, combined with the smoothness you get from a Dynaudio MSP mid bass or bass driver, uh, and you put that in a harsh room like this one where I have you know, metal cabinets and concrete floors and you have cars and things in the way. Uh, because they're so smooth and controlled, designed for critical listening in a studio, they just happen to do extremely well in a, in a, in a really harsh listening environment. I would wager most of us in the garage are listening to background music or music while you're working on something else. Uh, so I would suspect most people are going to sit between a pair of speakers and listen critically. But because of how they're designed and what they're made to do, the result is insane. And the, the output from these is, is really, really specific and really, really fantastic. So the entire core line, a couple of things that all of them share, and then we'll get into specifics here. We talked about the enclosure and the, the, the textured finish, um, the stoutness of the MDF baffle. Uh, they all use and all have a Pascal Class D amplifier. Um, so these speakers do need to be plugged into the wall. Uh, so you plug them in directly. They're all self-powered, self-amplified. All we have to do is provide them signal. I think Class D functions really well in a garage because of how cool it runs. Um, class D amplification tends to be more efficient. Uh, you could very easily plug a pair of any of these uh, into a 15 amp circuit and not have any issues with trip and breakers. So you, you wouldn't need a dedicated circuit for them. Uh, and um, and then you know most of us in our garage, many of us don't have uh, uh, conditioned air. Uh, you don't have an air conditioner in there, and so uh, you can't. You don't want to be. You don't want your expensive speakers overheating on you. And so they all have class D amplification. And the way that they have them powered, 
uh, whether it's the 59s and a mid-base driver or a tweeter on a Core 7. Uh, the tweeters on all three are 150 watts per channel rated, and the woofers get 500 watts each per channel rated as well. And so significant amounts of output. You won't be uh, wanting for more amp amplitude or output from any of these speakers. Uh, I think that uh, you're going to end up really enjoying how they sound because of what they're designed to do, uh, as well as uh, you're, you're not going to end up with uh, potential overheating issues and, and problems of not enough output. Uh, they're going to satisfy everything you might need in the garage. All of these share uh, the same driver technology, it's just dependent on, uh, we'll get into the detail here of what, what, what each speaker is, um, but they all use a couple of things in common, the Isotar Pro 1-inch tweeter silk dome. Uh, which is significant because in a harsh environment, I think that the smoothness of a silk dome tweeter just tends to work really, really well. Uh, it takes a lot of the harshness out. I actually set these speakers to dark, uh, which, uh, which drops a, a dB and a half off of the 20 K Hertz, uh, 20 kilohertz uh, frequency. So the upper registry, um, these are smooth out of the box and then the DSP they provide you allow you to smooth them out even more and they all have to share that they all share the uh, the the proprietary made in Denmark MSP uh, uh, driver technology or driver the polymer they use in in their uh, in their in their woofers is a Dynaudio signature and it's a large reason why they sound the way they sound uh, and then the mid bass drivers on, say, for instance, Core 59 uses an aluminum voice coil, which makes the mid bass driver lighter and faster and more responsive. These things in general are just freaking incredible. The, the amplitude as well as the sound signature you get from them is it's hard to beat. And in a garage, it's a match made in heaven. So let's first talk about the flagship, the Core 59. Um, these are rated to play uh, up to, I think, uh, I think they've uh, measured like 126 dB or some ridiculous output from these. Um, the, the Core 59 is the flagship, the biggest. As of today, right now, these are 3,000 bucks a piece or 6,000 a pair. Um, you could run multiples, you could run two pairs, you could run three, you could run a full seven channel surround setup with these if you wanted to, if you got really sophisticated. I use these as with all of the core speakers, I use them in a stereo configuration uh, with a subwoofer. Uh, but these could stand alone. This plays down to, uh, down to the rated plate on a 35 hertz, at, uh, 35 hertz at minus 6 dB. In the real world, probably producing somewhere around, uh, they rated at at uh, flat frequency response, they rate it at, uh, at uh, around 42, 43 hertz. Um, but these could function without a subwoofer if you wanted. Now in a large garage, which is where I think we're gonna end up putting these, in most instances, you're gonna want a subwoofer or two. Uh, the core sub is a great candidate for that. But it's 6,000 a pair. I know that that sounds ridiculous. In the world of studio monitors, 6,000 bucks is on the mid end, if, if not lower end, uh, from, from a pricing perspective. So the Core 59 has a single uh, nine inch uh, this has a copper voice coil. Uh, they use copper voice coils in their bass drivers. Uh, this is based off of the same technology uh, that they've utilized on the uh, longer throw uh, drivers they have in, say, the Sub 18S. Um, so the, the MSP type uh, woofer that's tuned uh, for lower frequencies uh, is, uh, is nine inches in side, size and extremely quick, accurate. It's one of those things that, uh, that uh, Dynaudio signature uh, is, is their mid-range and their tweeter. But the thing that surprises me so much is what the, the tightness and accuracy you get from the low frequency drivers in these, in these like this like Core 59 or Core 47, it's just incredible. And then the, the idea where they're using aluminum voice coils in their, in their, in their mid-range drivers for speed and lightweightness, and then they still use copper in, in base drivers. <laughs> I feel like I can hear that. I might be making that up. Um, but the accuracy you get from their, the, the, the lightweight quickness of their bass drivers, as well as the smoothness and detail you get from a Silk Dome Tweeter and, and a great mid-range, um, these speakers are 
I, I, I would argue, some of the best in the world. So one of the interesting things about the 59 is you can mount it in, in either horizontal configuration like I have shown here, uh, and then there's a switch on the back where you can choose you know, left and right speaker so it matters on these. Uh, or you can, you can have it set in a configuration like the Core 7s where it's mounted vertically, uh, just depending on your application. I think most garage applications you're going to want to mount it horizontally, uh, but it is, a, like we talked about on all the speakers, a front-firing base reflex port, but you can very simply remove the screws and turn the configuration. You can modify that on your own uh, in person and uh, they actually give you a tool to do that in the box. So the, the, the 59s in the horizontal configuration look like so. Uh, you have the one inch uh, Isotar, uh, Isotar Pro tweeter and, uh, and a five inch uh, mid-range driver. So one inch, five inch, nine inch, 500 watts, 500 watts, 150 watts for the tweeter. If we take a look at the back side, we'll actually flip it up so you can see it a little better. These weigh about 55 pounds a piece, so rather stout. On the back side, uh, we'll have a separate video talking about each one of these, these various uh, switches and DSP positions. Uh, one thing I will say about Core in general uh, is that their Pascal Class D amplification uh, is, is, I guess, fed via a 64-bit, 192 kilohertz digital signal processor. So if, say, for instance, you're listening to high-res uh, audio from a, you know, from a uh, Blue Sound node or a, an NADC-685 or something like that, the signal is going to come in via the analog uh, XLR connection input. And you're going to, uh, if you are listening to 24-bit, 192 kilohertz, you can rest assured that the DSP, the processing in this is more, uh, is higher resolution uh, than what the maximum uh, quality output you could actually, or input output that you would you would feed the the the, uh, the the speaker. So the DSP is very very sophisticated, and uh, you can hear that uh, when listening to, to high res stuff. Uh, so even in a garage, I, I think you can you can hear the difference there. Um, but you'll notice uh, we have analog and digital in. Digital would be for AES, uh, for uh, digital connections to a mixing or soundboard, which of course we're not going to have. So we're almost exclusively going to use the analog input. Uh, and then you would have uh, you would have all of your various switches for uh, bass extension, um, sound, uh, the, the sound balance. I run these in dark. Uh, so when you run them in dark mode, it has a, a slight, very slight roll off. Uh, so it has a, a negative one and a half dB output at 20 kilohertz and a plus one and a half dB, uh, dB output at 35 hertz, I believe. Uh, and so you're, you're getting um, uh, a subtle difference, but I like to run them dark because of the brightness of the garage. So that's the Core 59. Uh, as of today, right now, they're 6,000 bucks a pair, uh, but these, these guys are freaking, this is what I have in my garage and uh, what I think everybody should aspire to own. Uh, this is the, you know, this is, again, this is like the, the Ferrari uh, 45H Speciale of speakers uh, for the garage. baby brother to the Core 59, which is a bit more practical, both size-wise and dollar-wise, is $1,000 less uh, per pair. These are $2,500 a piece. Um, this is a 7-inch, 4-inch, and 1-inch tweeter, so 7-inch uh, uh, base driver, 
a four inch mid base driver, same, same tech, same concept where uh, you have an aluminum dome, uh, or I'm sorry, aluminum voice coil, aluminum winded voice coil uh, versus a copper in the, in the base, base driver. These only lose a couple of, um, couple of hertz in the frequency response. So these play down to, I believe, 37 hertz versus 35 on the core, the core 59s. So the biggest difference between the two is going to be amplitude. Um, the, the frequency response is going to be very similar. Um, the output of the smaller guy is not going to be as great. So I think it comes down to two things, size of your garage and size of your wallet. Uh, that would be really the, the only market difference between the two. If you look at the back side of this, same Pascal Class D amplification, same 500, 500, 150. Uh, you have the same exact amplifier, the same exact inputs, uh, same, you're gonna use the same analog in, has the same dip switches for DSP control. Uh, and so, like I said, really, this simply comes down to, you know, how much money you got, how much you're willing to spend, uh, how much do you value audio, uh, and how much, you know, output you need. So if, you know, my money's on the Core 59s, if I have a choice, uh, but the Core 57 is, uh, you know, is, I'm sorry, the Core 47 is a really incredible option. I think this one would probably be a bit more popular because of its size, um, but uh, but the, the, the sound, the sound you're getting from the two of these, to me, they sound ex very, very similar. It's just simple output, you know, output between the two. Call the Core Seven the little guy in the in the in uh, in, in comparison to other speakers. Uh, these played on 38 hertz, so similar frequency response. Seven-inch bass driver. It's devoid of a separate mid-bass driver, so I would say the the accuracy, specifically in the mid-range. I mean, that seems to make common sense uh, that the Core 47s and Core 59s win out there. Uh, but I think unless you had the three next to each other listening to back to back, uh, you'd be hard pressed to really know much of a difference. If you notice the back side of this, the amplifier is identical to the other two. Uh, the difference is you have two channels of amplification inside of each speaker rather than three. Uh, and these are vertical only speakers. So you're going to obviously position them in like so. They do interestingly have the little pockets for the feet, if you'll notice. Um, I didn't have the feet on the other the horizontal speakers, um, but they do provide these rubber uh, 3M adhesive backed uh, feet that you can put in really any position. And the other thing I didn't mention is that these are all uh, mount capable and uh, there's a core mount uh, that uh, Dynaudio has that we, you can purchase to mount these to the ceiling or the wall as well. And they do have a threaded insert on all sides of the speaker that you can mount it in any, any, any way that, uh, that you, you see necessary. So the Core 7s are another $1,000 less. Uh, these are $2,000 a piece or $4,000 a pair as of today in 2021. I'm sure that, that price is subject to change. But um, really, I think when it, when it comes down to it, when you're buying Core, uh, it comes down to, you know, how much, you know, are you willing to budget or spend? I think the word budget and these for the garage probably shouldn't be in the same sentence. Uh, but the, the idea here is that uh, you're going you're gonna to buy the one that fits your spot and uh, spend as, you know, you spend as much as you can. Uh, the Core 59s are better than the Core 7s, but they all sound the same. They sound the sound signature, the smoothness. 
the, uh, the, the biggest difference between them is the output. steal this from you, uh, but this is something that I find interesting. What is it going to show up to me? What does it look like? Uh, so this is an example. The, this is the Core 7 box. Uh, the, these come double boxed, so they're double double walled, double boxed. Uh, and so when you, when you get the speak, it'll come like so. And uh, they have this really interesting thing uh, in the in the in the package. The way they package these things is a little different than most. Uh, you're getting a, uh, they'll come with a tweeter cover on it to protect the tweeter from getting any kind of damage. So it'll come like this. The tweeter cover is fixed in the holes. I don't want to mess anything up and you'll pop that off. Uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting, I've never seen anything else packaged in this way, but this is a, a recycled material, but extremely dense. Like this probably weighs three and a half pounds. Um, it's extremely dense material, the way they package these, uh, and they show up you know, in the box like so. Uh, with your very limited, very simple things, uh, they come with a, a manual that you're really not gonna use, um, but it comes with this in the box. So it comes with a manual and a plastic cover, and they also come with uh, power cords as well. So other than that, there's nothing in the box It'll come with the manual, it'll come with the feet, it'll come with uh, power cords, and that, or a power cord, uh, and that's how they, how they show up. They also ship these with a European plug, which you're not gonna use, uh, but they do ship it with that. So I thought you might be interested in what the boxes look like. Core 59s, Core 7s, they all come the same. So in conclusion, I have Core 59s in my garage. That's what's in the OGHQ here. Uh, I will spec Core 59s. This is the flagship. It's the, 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 the flagship option that I have for audio in the garage. I'm choosing those. Uh, if you're asking for my input, it really, it just comes down to how much you're willing, how much you value speakers in the garage, how much you're willing to spend. Uh, the, really, the only reason to buy a Core 7 over a core 47 over a core 59 uh, is just simply the dollars that you have allocated for the application otherwise i don't see any downsides uh, downsides to, to buying a core 59 so of the of the three speakers i would choose core 59s and two core subs and you got yourself the ultimate garage audio system so we keep these in stock, uh, all, all three of them, as long as they're available in the U.S. Um, we keep these available for you. We ship them all over the, all over the country. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, hit us up, uh, support at obsessedgarage.com. All of my guys are equipped with all the information you might need. If we don't know the answer, we'll figure it out for you. Uh, but the core line is what I think we all should aspire to own in our garages. I know that these are are something that um, that uh, you know the application seems a bit odd, but I'm telling you, I don't I don't uh, make proclamations very often. But the proclamation here is that this, I would argue, is one of the very best versions of a speaker for a garage on the darn planet. That's a Matt Mormon uh, proclamation for you. So anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate your support. Core stuff is available at possessgarage.com.